dollar and the going down of the local currency and we're looking at that every time investigating every time we're thinking about the market we're thinking about the companies we're thinking about what to do and what not to do we're thinking of how to run the race of the people of the world and meet up with commercial demands it says they bought and they sold they planted and they built it but the same day that lot went out of sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all have you noticed that in all these situations have you noticed that in all these events have you noticed that in all these historical things that jesus christ was making allusion to only very few were saved only very few escaped but the majority of the people they perished in the flood and they perished in the fire of sodom and gomorrah and jesus christ is saying so shall it be at the time of the coming of the lord you might feel that the majority is doing this the majority is sinning the majority even though they are religious they're living in sin and you might think it's all right no it's not all right all those people will perish when christ comes all those people will be left behind when christ comes it's always the few the few who are saved the few who are righteous the few who are holy the few whose heart is totally linked with the heart and the mind of the lord the fire came upon them and they were all destroyed even thus even so shall it be in the day when the son of man is revealed verse 32 remember lord's wife those were the very words of the lord jesus christ he says there'll be backsliders the people you think would have escaped the people you think they've seen angels they've seen revelation they've heard the watch of the lord they knew the judgment was coming they heard the warning look not behind you escape to the mountain let me show you that story it's in genesis chapter 19 because jesus said read that story look at that story analyze that story it's going to be exactly like that when christ comes again and then he tells us remember lord's wife i'm reading from genesis chapter 19 verse 1 it says and there were two angels that came to sodom it said there came two angels to sodom at evening and lord sat in the gate of sodom and lord, see, lord seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground and after doing all that greeting them accepting them welcoming them he told them to come into his house the angel said no we're here on an errand we're here to do something the lord has told us to do but eventually he persuaded them and he came to his house look at verse 4 but before they lay down the men of the city even the men of sodom come past the house round both old and young all the people from every quarter and he called unto lord and said unto him where are the men which came in to thee this night bring them out unto us that we may know them that's where the watch homosexuals come come in sodomites that's why the, why the word is used for them these were men and the angels appeared like men and he said we want to know them they wanted to mess them up and then lord went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him he was pleading with them don't do such an evil thing but they were bent on doing evil just like the people of today look at it now from verse 9 and he says stand back and he said again this one fellow came into sir john and he will needs be a judge now will we deal worse with thee than with them 
and he pressed so upon the man that he is upon Lord, even Lord, and came near to break the door. They were so bent on wanting to mess up those angels that look like men that they wanted to break the door. Look at verse 10. But the men, that is the angels, put forth their hand and pushed Lord into the house to them and shut the door and dismount the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great. So the angels smote them with blindness. That's to drive them away so that they will not discover where the door is. You know, they were so bent on wanting to do evil. Look at the latter part of verse 11. So that they wearied themselves to find the door. They still wanted to find the door. Judgment came upon them. Even with the appearance of the judgment. Or the blindness that came to them. They still wanted to get into that place and mess up those angels. That's how wicked they were. And that's what the Lord is telling us. As it was in the time of Lord. So shall it be. At the time of the coming of the Son of Man. The people will be so bent in doing, wanting to do evil. Even when they see the judgment of God coming like this. They still want to commit evil. Look at verse 15. And when the morning arose. Then the angels hastened Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, even Lord himself, he was lingering. He saw that these were angels. He saw that these were mighty angels. He saw the quidditch might, those sodomites were blindness. He knew that they came from heaven. They came from the Lord to destroy the place. And there and was one come out of this place. Still, he was spiritually sluggish. He lingered. The men laid hold upon his hand. And upon the hand of his wife. And upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord be merciful unto him. And they brought him forth. And set him outside without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad. That he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed. Those were believers. But they were told the danger was still there. They ought to prepare themselves. They ought to get ready. Escape to the mountain top. Escape so that you'll not be consumed in the fire coming upon the unbelievers and the sinners. Look not behind you. You remember Jesus said, remember Lot's wife? Why did he say that? Look at verse 26. But his wife, Lot's wife, looked back from behind him and became a pillar of salt. She could have been saved, but she perished. She could have escaped, but she couldn't escape because Sodom was in her mind. All the treasures of Sodom, all the pleasures of Sodom, all the evil in Sodom, all the lost in Sodom, all the sensuality in Sodom, all the immorality in Sodom, all the nightclubs in Sodom, all the things pulled her back. And because of that, she looked back and Jesus said, even so shall it be at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. And he, re and he, te he tells us, remember Lord's wife. The people that love the world so much. They love the things of this world so much. That even though they hear the trumpet sounding. Even though they hear the warning coming out. Even though they know that it's so dangerous. Loving the world or the things of the world. They're so much attached to the world. It's difficult for them to break off. 
I pray that at this time the Lord will be merciful to every one of us in Jesus' name. And He will take our mind, our heart away from the world. Any sin that will make us not to be ready. In James chapter 4, James chapter 4, reading from verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world, communion of the world, fellowship of the world, interaction with the world, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, will be the enemy of God. That's what happened to Lord's wife and she perished. That's why the warning of the Lord is coming to us. It says, get ready. The world is evil. The world is sinful. And only those who will come out of those evil things of the world, only those people will be saved, rescued, they'll escape on the final day. Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 34 Luke chapter 21 reading from verse 34 and take heed to yourselves these are the words of Jesus Christ if there were no danger there will be no warning but he warned his own disciples and he's warning his own church today take heed unto yourselves he's warning every believer today don't, don't mix with the world to the point that you forget. You have a place to go. You're a pilgrim here on earth. And if you're so entrenched and meshed in the things of the world, you'll perish of the world. It's warning us. And it's sounding the note of warning very clearly. And it says, take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time. Lest at any time. What time is it in your life? when you could be so careless and forget yourself what time is it in your life when the world could get so near and you'll forget the warning of the lord what time is it in your life when all the things that surround you will try to deaden you towards spiritual things it says less at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life and the cares of this life and the cares of this life cares of this life will make you forget that you're on your way to heaven cares of this life will make you forget that whosoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of god the cares of this world will make you forget that those things will make you unspiritual will make you carnal will dead in your soul, dead in your spirit, dead in your life, will make you unprepared, not ready for the coming of the Lord. Take heed unto yourselves. Lest at any time the cares of this life come upon you. Yeah, you're so involved with the cares of the life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. What she therefore, what she therefore, what she therefore, and pray always that she may be able, that she may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Revelation chapter 18. The Lord is calling upon us that because of how the world is sinful sensual evil immoral you cannot stay in the world agree with the world go along with the world and still make it on the final day that's why the warning is coming revelation chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 4 it tells us and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people you want to be saved come out of her my people out of those nightclubs come out out of the drunkenness come out out of their fornication and adultery you come out out of their cutting corners and giving their bribes and receiving bribes come out and out of the evil things the adultery 
the idolatry and the occultism it says come out out of dressing like them talking like them eating like them drinking like them it says come out out of all their secret societies it says come out it says come out of her my people that she be not partakers of her sins and that she receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven the sins are so great they're so numerous and they're so very diverse that you cannot even begin to number them it says their sins have reached unto heaven so great and so high and god has remembered her iniquities and for you to escape the judgment that will come upon the people on the face of the earth when christ comes you need to come out come out of the world and come into the salvation of the lord point number two now watchfulness and preparation for christ coming we know christ is coming and we know the condition of the world when christ will come and we need to get ready that's why we need to watch we're coming to matthew chapter 25 the lord jesus himself who prophesied is coming who promised is coming the lord jesus christ himself who reminded that the disciples that this world is not going to be the end of all things that christ will come he will come he'll take the people to himself he warned his people he called his people to watchfulness and it's calling you and me to watchfulness so that we will be ready at the time of his coming and then he says he was ears to hear let him hear i pray that you'll have ears to hear i said you'll have ears to hear you will watch and be ready in jesus name matthew chapter 25 i'm reading from verse 1 matthew 25 verse 1 then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom they all believed doctrinally that the bridegroom was coming but that wasn't enough there are many people that believe that jesus christ is coming doctrinally but that's not enough watchfulness is necessary preparedness is necessary readiness is necessary it says in verse 2 and five of them were wise and five were foolish could you be waiting for the coming of the lord and be foolish that's what he said could you believe that christ is coming and still be foolish that's what he said could you actually read from the word of god christ is coming and still be foolish that's what he said he said five of them were wise and five were foolish it tells us in verse 3 and they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them talking of the grace that saves us the grace that sanctifies the grace that pours the oil the anointing the unction of the only ghost of